<clears throat> that the voters are trying something new, that they are really desperate, that they have voted in many cases from the time they were 18, they've been trying every four or eight years to try to find good government, and they've voted the traditional line. They voted for the middle of the road Democrat, the middle of the road Republican per se, and they keep saying, well, that's not working. I've got to try something else. And so on the Republican side, they've gone in this case to the fundamentalist, to someone who's the pure thing, who's very much a values-driven uh, guy, who's not necessarily in any way a politician, really, in the traditional sense. And on the Democratic side, they've gone to someone who is, he's almost third world in his background and the way he grew up and rally offers himself as a politician. He doesn't run as a nationalist, per se. And maybe they're just trying, to, Howard, to make your point, I really think they might be just out there earnestly trying to find the solution to this puzzle of American government. And they don't think that the traditional way of voting, but the way the ward leader tells you to vote, or the way they do in the voter guide, has ever worked. Because yeah. they've tried every four years, and they've gone to vote, and they just want this country to work. And yet they look at health care is stuck, the war is stuck, energy is stuck, the climate change is stuck. There's not an issue that we've resolved since the Civil Rights Act in 64. We don't do anything in our government anymore. We don't finish a job. Name something we've done. Except raise taxes, lower them, raise spending, lower spending, pork barrel, this, that. The Congress doesn't solve problems. Well, and that's the, a problem. You get the sense, Chris, uh, and this may change, this may be naive, but you get the sense, at least on this night, that it w if it were up to uh, Barack Obama and Mike Huckabee, they might be able to sit down and reasonably work something out because they seem, they may not end up being that way, but they seemed on this night, and to these voters in Iowa, to be the kinds of leaders that you're talking about and that's clearly what people are looking for one other point about obama i don't totally buy that whole third world or global view i think what he's trying to do is marry that with traditional american rhetoric and in his speech tonight he said my story could only happen in america so what he's trying to do is say you can have a global perspective and a, and a uniquely American one at the same time, and that's incredibly reassuring to Americans who feel they've been read out of the of the world community. That's very, very powerful, but it's because it's so American. That's what he's trying to show. But you know, there's a real problem here, and I think you're getting to it. You know, the real pros have not been really helpful to us over the years. You know, back when Nixon, of all people back in 74, was trying to do national health care, and he was really trying to do it, a mandated program. It was an employer mandate. It was pretty strong. Ted Kennedy didn't like the looks of it, so he undermined it. When Hillary Clinton was trying to do her health care plan, Bill Kristol ran a brilliant scorched earth campaign against her from outside government, and it worked. So there's always some guy on the other side who's willing to be a saboteur, and it's not too hard to do it once you want to do it. And it seems to me we've got to figure out how do we get, get those people to accept the best we can do and to try to make the best deal and not to try to kill what are the other sides. When Hillary Clinton was also trying to do health care, somebody came along with an idea for, hey, look, why don't we take every public high school in the United States and really bolster up their infirmary so the kids can get shots and the kids can get health checks. And the, and the kids, at least while they're in school, can get pretty good health care. Just bolster up the nurse. Just give her more than she has, a few more people, a few more drugs, whatever, uh, more chances to give shots. Just, and she said, too small bore. It's not what I want. I want something bigger. So we got nothing. It, it, it just, it's amazing how, I mean, the more you learn about government, how it just breaks down because of people being either perfectionists or saboteurs of the other side. I, and maybe I, you're right. Maybe these two guys are the kind of guy that say, damn it, let's try to get what we can get done in a year. Let's try to do the best health care plan we can figure out in a year and then sign the damn bill and move it on. I, I would, don't know. I would say, Chris, though, that there's, I think there's a, it's not party versus party, and it's not just bureaucracy. It's that there are entrenched interests that really don't want there to be advancement on the big issues that face America, on health care, on energy, on our infrastructure, and all of these things. If there isn't a leader who's got their eyes on the horizon, who actually has a vision of where they want to go, and is willing to knock, it, knock a few skulls to get there, then the people who end up holding the center and keeping things the way they are, are the, you know, pharmaceutical companies and the insurance okay, companies that's and all those argument. I'm making a simpler argument, which is that politicians don't want other politicians to get credit. It's a jealousy game. They want all the credit. And that's why they don't want the other side to get any of the credit. And that's what often happens in these efforts to try to fix some problem. A, a side would rather the other side failed completely than something got done. And I think that's the trade-off you see too often in politics. But sometimes it's inside. not politician versus politician. Sometimes it's politician versus the system. And that's when that's populism again. has a role.
It, 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 it is a, well, a useful see, argument for the, for the ideologue, but unfortunately, inside the political game, I've seen so much vanity stand in the way of so much progress. Who's arguing again. against health care reform? Who's arguing against energy independence? But nobody is. But there's a reason these things never happen. And it's not because somebody has a political platform where they say, I want America to keep going backwards on these issues. Everybody says they want to fix them, and they never get fixed. And a it's because nobody's knocking the Hillary white heads. Clinton could have cut a health care deal. Well, it, it maybe maybe that's the case. Hillary says she's learned from that experience, right, and well, you can take that where you want to. But useful. somebody's going to have to take on the insurance companies to win that, not just the other political party. All right, let me step.